Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next Quora video. And this one's going to be my review of Republic City Hustle Part 3, as well as uh, reviewing the whole web series as a whole. Um, but before I get into the review, I just want to talk about, I suppose, the release of this, and I suppose how to view it if you're not in America as well. So that should be helpful for everyone going forward. Um, so this came out yesterday night. That seems to be the time that they're releasing these uh, web series at in or around 8 o'clock um, our own time. And yeah, it went up. And so uh, mainly I want to talk here before I get into the review about how to view Nick.com if you're not from America. Because if you don't know, it's a region locked site to America. If you try and access it from the UK, Ireland, you go to nick.co.uk and so on and so forth because the German website and so on. Um, so you do need to have some sort of program to access that site because nick.com is the nick website that has all of the, the videos and stuff like that first. So there's a big advantage to be able to access that site for new stuff. Especially when book 2 comes out when they'll be putting the episodes up online for a few days to view. So um, I'm obviously from Ireland, so I need to use a program to access the site myself to get like news and stuff like that. And uh, how I do that is by using a program called TunnelBear. There'll be a link in the description to that. Um, it's a free program, though you do need to sign up for an account for it and download the program. But once you do that, it's fairly easy to use. You just open it up turn it on, switch it to America, and then you can access Nick.com or other American region locked websites. Um, and I think there's like a UK setting as well on it if you're from America and need to access UK websites. But for the most part I use it for accessing Nick.com because as I said, you get lots of exclusive stuff there. And it's much better being able to access it, but you have the awkwardness of using a program that having to wait like a few hours for someone to upload it to YouTube or something like that. So um, it's a, I think it's a pretty big help, with, uh, especially when you want to like play some of those games that go up there like Welcome to Republic City and so on. So I definitely recommend using TunnelBear to access the site and view it that way. It's just, um, the major I wanted to ask, uh, mention that is because every time I post a news post about something that goes up on Inc.com, someone always asks, I'm not in America, how do I view this? and I always have to say this, so I'm just going to explain it here. But uh, anyway, Republic City Hustle Part 3, the final part of the web series. I really liked it. Um, I, I thought it was a good ending to um, the web series. Um, it was a little bit predictable because, you know, I think everyone knew Toza was ultimately going to listen to Bolin's um, words from Part 2 and uh, not throw the match. I weren't exactly sure like if he'd go down fighting or that he'd actually come back and win and then the, we knew the ending was going to end up with something like he's inspired by the brothers and takes them in but again there's still a few interesting parts there as well as the whole middle section being pretty uh, new as well but um, I'll just go through it now and kind of discuss it um, so it obviously starts off in the pro vending arena the match is underway and uh, basically Shady Sheen says to the brothers that you know all the bets that you got for the um, porcupines are really going to make us a lot of money because obviously they want Toza to lose the match, and he effectively is losing the team of the match. They get he gets the other two of his teammates eliminated, and he's left in the arena, kind of dangling on the edge. And Shady Shin's just like go down, go down. But then he comes back, and you kind of see him take into mind what Bolin said to him, like you're the best in part two, and he makes a big comeback, wins via a hat trick and then Bolin in celebration kind of is like yes I told him to say that I told him to do that yesterday and then obviously that, that's when um, the kind of interesting part happened in that the triple threats actually attack Marco and Bolin in the gym in Toza's gym so that was very um, interesting to see that over money they like literally tried to like injure or kill kids so um yeah, just did a good job at making the um, triple threats the kind of bad guys in this situation once again. That all they care about is money, pretty much. And um, <clears throat> it was uh, it was just interesting in that we had basically our first 
out and out fight scene. We have the kind of play fight in the um, first part, but in this one it was um, kind of the first out and out fight. Um, obviously, this animation style doesn't work, I suppose, the best for these bending fight scenes, but it, but it was pretty good, I think. Um, it, given the animation style, it, it did be the best they could with the bending. Um, and really did show that these two kids can hold their own against kind of adult benders and then this is where Toza arrives and um, basically defends them and in kind of pays the triple threats back by giving them the prize money that he won for winning the match and they kind of after Lightning Bolt Zolt comes in they kind of walk off happy that they've gotten their money um, <clears throat> but uh, I suppose the most interesting part, I think, was definitely these final few uh, moments where um, Toza kind of goes to the, the brothers and says that you're really good at bending. Um, I think you could go pro with a bit of training and stuff like that. I think you could be champions. And then it's kind of this kind of battle of um, kind of influencing the, the brothers between Toza and Shady Shin. In that uh, Shady at least puts the decision on Mako, you know, like, you know, come with us, you know, you're not going to uh, be able to look after your brother if you stay with him. While obviously Toes is giving them the opportunity to potentially become um, pro benders and that was obviously like uh, assure them their like future and survival and stuff like this. <coughs> so um, it's kind of this, um, in Mako's head at least, this really tough decision put on him between going with the triple threats and basically being guaranteed money but Mako kind of has to put his brother in a position where he basically has to be a criminal and do stuff that he doesn't want his brother doing and Bolin obviously doesn't want to do but they're kind of assured like money and survival and stuff like that while going with Toza is kind of more of the risk but um, it's something his brother wants to do and Mako I think deep down wants to do it as well but he's just really thinking about protecting his brother, the survival and I think ultimately he does um, really take into mind what his brother wants and decides that no, we're not going to be criminals anymore, you know, we're going to go with Toza, as he at least likes the idea of this pro bending and stuff like that, and I think more than that the most interesting thing was that Toza did offer them the uh, space to live in the above the gym basically, so that was good. And uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much the episode, it kind of ends on that note, kind of explaining more or less how the brothers come to be living where they are, why they're kind of friendly with Toza, and uh, what how they got involved in pro bending and their few thing with the triads, as, as well as, you know, the whole series introducing us to how Pabu met uh, um, Bolin and stuff like that. So, on the whole, you know, th this part three was actually pretty good. Um, yeah, the predictability is not predictability is not always a bad thing. I think people often just because they've seen it before tend to rant on everything else that's the same. But at the end of the day, that's kind of ignoring the specifics of it happening here. And I, and I liked what it did, um, especially those final few scenes when um, there was Mako putting that really tough decision of making the kind of decision for his brother on what to do. I think that really did wonders for his character and. As a whole, I think Republic City Hustle has done great things for Mako and Bolin as characters as well. Because it's just um, further explained to you kind of their personalities, especially I think Mako, just in terms of why he is so serious about certain things and always kind of um, very weary about doing anything and uh, pragmatic about things, protective of his brother and stuff like this. It did a really good job as him. Um, showing you why Mako is as he is, um, which I, th I think is the most important thing. I think a lot of people have a, a much better understanding of his character now, and no one really hates him as much anymore, though there are still a ton of haters out there. Um, but um, yeah, th th this series also had some uh, kind of nice um, cameo appearances. Um, it was nice to see uh, Shiro Shinobi and um, Lightning Bolt Zolt in part three, and it was interesting. I think they did get Jeff Bennett back to voice um, Shiro Shinobi, which was nice. Um, and it's just obviously fun to see the characters in these different designs. Um, if I had one negative about the whole series, I think it's just that nothing really places it in the timeline. 
there was nothing really stated to show that, like, oh, this happens X many years before the present day Legend of Korra book one. The art book sort of hints at it being two years uh, ago, um, but at the same time, the, you could say it was before this. Um, even stuff like um, if they just said something along the lines of that Toza went on to kind of get to like the semi finals but ultimately lost out, and the pro bending champions for that year were the Wolf Bats, then we'd know we'd be able to place it somewhere in the timeline in that so the Wolf Bats are four time champions, including book one. So then you'd be able to place it in time as, okay, this is either one, two, or three years ago with the Wolf Bats winning. That would have been nice just to place it in time because I think it's either two or four years ago uh, just because of the kind of estimated ages of the characters. Um, but um, we get a little bit about Toza and that he won the championship ten years ago and that this was kind of implied that this was his final season. So... It did some nice stuff for Toza as well, because really he's a non-character in Korra, he's just this grumpy guy, but here you get to see more of the side of, you know, you, you kind of wonder, like, if he's so grumpy, it doesn't seem to like Malcolm Bolin so much in the show, why did he take him in the first place? And then seeing that, oh, he does really, um, kind of appreciate what they did for him, kind of, uh, keep ma making him basically maintain his honour, and not losing the match on purpose, and stuff like that, so that's why he took them in. Um, so that, that was nice to see as well, um, uh, but overall, yeah, I think that's basically my full thoughts on this, um, really good, I really hope they do more with this art style and do other stories along the same lines, because, you know, while this was good and exciting, it, it was a bit odd to see that, you know, it was a Mako and Bolin backstory, where, you know, Korra and Spirits would have been the kind of big thing to kind of preview book two. So I do get the feeling that they are going to continue these maybe in between the seasons. Maybe we'll get another one because there are three weeks left before Korra starts and they could definitely fit in like another three part series before the show begins. Um, but like I think they have a lot of potential to tell some stories. Um, one story they could do would be um, Korra and how she met Naga, because we know that um, she met Naga as a pup who was lost in the uh, went in a tundra, which may go into um, Korra's isolation in the Avatar compound, and that she maybe broke the rules to go into the tundra to get Naga stuff like that, and that she was in the maybe explore the fact that she didn't really have any friends in the Avatar compound, and that Naga was effectively her first friend and stuff like this. Um, you could tell the story of Noah Talk after he leaves in the skeleton in the closet, leaving his brother and um, father in the uh, blizzard. How he comes to get the mask, how he comes to develop the um, blood bending skill to take people bending, um, and especially how he comes to meet Hiroshi and kind of join up with him. It'd just be this perfect. Um, set up for Amon, giving that little bit of backstory as well as um, explaining the Hiroshi connection and you get some characterization in Hiroshi. Um, some other stuff I suppose, um, maybe explore Lin and Tenzin when they were a couple, how they broke up, how they got together, something like that. Um, there's a lot of potential to tell stories and that's just like backstories. They, I think they could still do um, maybe other little stories that take place during book one or something like that, or in between seasons, because, you know, there's six, still six months in between book one and book two. So I think there's a ton of potential. Uh, I really hope they put Republic City Hustle on, like, the book two DVD. I hope they do that. Um, don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, but overall, it was just a really pleasant surprise. I don't think anyone expected something along like this uh, uh, web series to come out so Nick actually putting it out and like really hyping up book two with it was um really good um just that we had something to look forward to and it it's really helped pass the time in the past three weeks and now there's only three weeks left we're in the home run basically to book two so uh yeah uh thanks for watching um I'm not really sure how much Korra news is going to come out between now and this premiere, but uh, I think 
the way I'm going to do the premiere, depending on if it is one or two episodes, is that I'm going to do a, rev a separate review for episode one, Rebel Spirit, a separate review for the Southern Light, and then do only do a preview, uh, a speculation video on like the Southern Light, because there's no point in putting a like speculation video after I've already seen episode two. Um, so, thanks for watching, and bye.